Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about exactly how you can start working on an ambulance. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's a paramedic coach. And before we begin, make sure to annihilate, destroy, smash that like button down below. And if you are new here, be sure to hit subscribe and notification bell and join us here at the paramedic coach army. Now, today we're talking about how to actually work on an ambulance. Let's dive into it. So what we're going to be talking about here are the different levels of the ambulance first. So you understand that piece. Then we're going to talk about, well, what do we need to actually work on an ambulance? Let's do that first. So first we have here is we talk about high school and we talk about a driver's license. So now, depending on where you live, every state is different. So there's two things you gotta know. There's two main bodies that basically govern what EMS does. So first is something called your state government. And the second thing is called NREMT, okay? That's the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. You either have to pass a state test or you have to pass your national registry in order to get a state license to practice in that state. Now, signing up for an EMT class. EMT classes are usually found in hospitals, usually found in uh, EMS training centers, like a volunteer ambulance, for example. Um, they also can be found um, in different programs, like a community college or even a university, a beer college as well. Um, you can find an EMT program or class. Now, what I recommend if you're getting started in this career is taking a local EMT class, right? In some areas, you can actually take an EMT class while in high school, which is pretty cool. Some high schools will actually offer an EMT class. Now, in other areas, you may have to be 18 years old, have graduated high school with a diploma or GED, and have a driver's license. So it all depends on your area. If you know that you want to do something in the medical field, uh, what I recommend is that you actually go in high school. Why not if you're going to on that medical track and gain your EMT there if you're able to. Now, if you're not able to, okay, and you're not on that medical track, and maybe you're like myself who stumbled upon the medical profession at 19 years old, okay, well, it's a different ball game. At that point, you're going to have a high school diploma or GED, and a driver's license. So the difference between uh, a certification and a license. So the NREMT here, that is a certification that you pass the test on that day and you met the qualifications to sit for the test, you sat for the test, and you passed it, okay? There's a practical hands-on portion, okay? And there's a cognitive portion, okay? which is basically a written test. Getting into the field of EMS, and you're watching this video right now, and you stumbled across me on YouTube, I highly recommend, no matter where you are or where state you're in, I recommend that you get your national registry because you're in school mode right now. You're in school mode right now. You're not working in work mode. You're in school mode right now. So I recommend while your skills are sharp, while your brain is sharp, just going and passing your national registry as well. And why? Because you may move one day. And if you move one day, this is why they have the national registry, so you can move state to state and you can keep your provider status. Just, just with the state, you may not be able to do that. And that's why they have the national registry. So I highly recommend you pass it. Also, obviously gonna look good for you on your resume as well. Now, what I can tell you about the profession is the majority of providers in EMS are actually right here, actually EMTs. So the thing about the EMT level is it not only does the EMT level get career first responders, but also gets people from other professions. So if you're studying for nursing school, right? or PA school, right? You may come across uh, and get your healthcare hours with EMT, right? So you get some experience, right? 
So that's why I believe the EMT level has so much. Also, think about it. All the volunteer ambulance services are all staffed by EMTs, right? A lot of the fire departments are staffed by firefighter EMTs. Now, depending on what area you're in and depending on how far you want to go in this career, there are other levels. So for the most part, if what I've seen is the advanced EMT and paramedic. Now, in most areas, in most areas, there's only an EMT and a paramedic. An advanced EMT would be the mid-level, the second level on the ambulance service in the United States. Now, an advanced EMT practices something called advanced life support and so does a paramedic. An EMT practices basic life support. Now, the difference between BLS and ALS basically comes down to how invasive are the procedures that you're doing on a regular basis. So for example, um, IV access is something that advanced EMTs and paramedics do. EMTs don't perform IV access. Now, EMTs do perform uh, EpiPen in injection, right? So that, that is considered somewhat invasive, but again, that's the only intramuscular tool in their toolbox for the most part. Some areas may have Narcan, by the way. Okay, so we, we understand that, but that's what, that's what we're talking about there, the level of invasiveness, right? So for example, you can see this heart monitor over here uh, on the chute. This heart monitor is used by primarily paramedics to read off EKGs. Uh, on this machine here, you can uh, defibrillate shock a patient. You can use a synchronized cardio version, another way of shocking the patient. Um, you can also uh, put a pacemaker on the patient as well using pacing. These are all high level medical skills used by paramedics. It's down the link in the description. What that course entails, you get access to my video vault. 160 videos plus you get access to a private community group where I can be your coach right inside of a Facebook group. You can ask me questions while you're studying and preparing. Now, there's an entire section in that 160 videos that goes over prepping for EMT, advanced EMT, and paramedic. So, if you're somebody right now, please do not walk in blind to EMT school. If you prepare first, sit in the front of the class, and follow the guide down below in the description, you'll be more than prepared, and your fellow students will be shocked with the knowledge that you've got. By the way, for the real ones, this is the first video I'm releasing with the new studio, I uh, hope you like it. If you didn't know, that's our friend, uh, Tacky the Tiger. He's my sidekick once in a while he comes out. Um, we're giving away at Scope soon. See details on my channel. And hope you like the new studio. Hope you like what we're doing here. Like, subscribe, annihilate, smash that like button. Love you all. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cap. Oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there and then I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Olds obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you gotta prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is guys, you don't ever wanna hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't wanna hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you wanna have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions 
passing two sections um, near passing one and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have, I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I, I will gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.